You already know what time it is. It's your boy DJ Richie Scott back with some tea, interviews, recaps, and more. And be sure to check the links in the description of this video for trips, for books, one-on-one -on -one sessions, and more. Now let's get into the tea. What is going on, Sky Squad? We are back in the building with one of our favorite people on and off the cameras, okay? Um, this is somebody that I vent to that I can give all my business and my tea to, and I know that it stays in a safe space, a locked box, forever buried underneath the <laughs> bowels of the earth. <laughs> It is Taria from the What Else Is Going On podcast. Thank you for coming back. Thank you for having me. I feel the same about you. I know I tell this story probably every time I come on and when you come on my platform, but you know, we live in a texting culture because we're busy. But when I accidentally butt dialed Richie all the way from California via FaceTime, my phone did it three times. He was out and he answered three times. I said, that's my friend. <laughs> That's me. Like, I'm not a, um, my friends, like my, like all of my close friends know I might not be the person to pick up the phone and call, but if you call me, I am going to immediately respond. And if I don't immediately respond, I'm going to call back because mm -hmm. these days I feel like you just never know. Yeah. Yeah. So you, we gotta, we gotta always, this is, and this is for any of y'all out there. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta keep each other. Yeah together okay sometimes um, i'm scared when my phone rings i'm like oh my lord please no i can't <laughs> listen, it don't matter listen. what time anymore it used to be early in the morning now it's just like if my kids call me during the day hello <laughs> exactly you like what is what's going on yes. i had so this is we since we just talking okay. <laughs> i had an issue the other day no the, about two about a week ago right I, it was like midnight, something had happened in the house. So I call my cousin who has a, you know, uh, they have a, like a construction, like slash home improvement company. Okay. So I'm like, it's midnight and I'm calling her <laughs> and she immediately picks up the phone. She's like, hello. <laughs> I was like, it ain't life or death. <laughs> you know, again, it's just that it's that moment in your head where you're getting this midnight phone call from a family member and you just never know. Yes. My daughter accidentally FaceTimed me and her brother, but she calls me, she calls her dad's phone every night to say goodnight. She accidentally oh, FaceTimed like us every single night. And it's supposed to be a quick good night, but her and Corey will be on the phone for about an hour most times. And I'll be chiming every now and then, but every single night she calls from school and if she doesn't call she sends a text so she um i woke up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and was like missed call and it wasn't the family chat it was just me and her brother but then she texts sorry that i called i mean even something as simple as um you know r.i.p to the i don't know if you saw but there was a young woman an influencer who went to an influencer event and passed away because she ate something that she was allergic to. And, and, and they're saying that she had given, you know, them, I guess her allergies or whatever. And she like just passed away, I think a couple of days ago, I thought about my kids and their food allergies. And then my son, literally after reading that, about two hours later, we're texting and he says, man, y'all, I felt so bad yesterday. I think I'm allergic to shrimp. I ate something, my stomach was hurting, my throat was hurting. I said, boy, don't play with me because I will be on a plane to like, I will be leaving. Are you okay? Yes, mom, I'm okay. You know, and it's just like, life is it. so precious. Like, oh my gosh, what if he found out, we found out he was allergic in a more tragic way. And then I told him, I said, I literally just read about so-and-so. And he was like, I know that's so sad. I started to tell him, boy, I know you're about to be 23 in January. I'm ordering all foods. Okay. <laughs> you can't I get it. I get it. That's what happened to me when I was in Mexico. I had gone to escape the, the election chaos, which we <sighs> can't even discuss. Mm -hmm. But I get a call from my mom and I was going to be leaving the next day. But, you know, when she said my dad was in the hospital, I could <gasps> hear it in her voice. That she, oh. And immediately I am on the booking site. <laughs> 
Okay. And there was a flight. Now this, granted, this happened. I got this phone call at like 2.30. There was a flight. No, I got it at maybe 2.15. There was a flight that was leaving at five. I had to pack up my stuff. I make the flight, first of all. Right. Pack up my stuff. I made it to the airport at like 4.15. No lie. It was crazy. It was so crazy, but you know, everything worked out. Everything like, worked out. So, and my dad, his health prognosis looks good. You know, yes. he's just go through the treatments and things. And so, you know, we just thank God for that. I have been praying for your dad. Crazy. Thank you. I have been praying for him. And also you talk a lot about entrepreneurship and different ways it frees you up. I don't think we think about in these moments, if you were chained to a nine to five and couldn't leave because you didn't have time or your boss was like, no. And you like, well, I'm leaving anyway. So you do whatever you got to do. That's my dad. It would have been fact that, Yeah. Like you can do whatever you want to do. I won't be here. But the <laughs> fact that you are able to still maneuver, you know, and, and, Still, even even still, even though you don't want to think about it that way, but you still have to live. You still have to say you're still able to make money and do these things while taking care of your mom, being there with your dad, being there with your family. So that is mm -hmm. such a blessing in itself. We don't think mm -hmm. about in those ways that it's a blessing when we when when we're in the trenches of doing what it is we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Just to give you all some, um, and, and this, these are the honest. These are the conversations we have. Yes, we do. <laughs> Richie had me running around my living room yesterday saying, thank you, Jesus. I literally took off in a run. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth. There was a point in time where um, I had questioned whether or not I should go into ministry. Um, uh, it was a couple of years ago. And then mm -hmm. every now and again, I will get that feeling um, yep. as I'm doing a live or as I'm, you know, reading some housewife or house husband <laughs> on a show and i'm you know in, in, a, in a very i'll say in love okay yes you know, yes I, you're I, calling I, them I, in yeah. you're calling them in not calling yeah, them out yeah. calling them in calling them in and i'll get that urge and i'm like you know should i have gone into that then i'll be like no uh-uh uh -uh. i don't want i don't want that weight because i Listen. feel like that's a, that's a heavier weight than i that i could carry and to me that calls for a higher rise of self just like a teacher has to rise above getting into arguments with students you know what i mean like a, a pastor you you should be above not that you're above reproach but you mm -hmm. your standards you need to carry yourself to a certain standard it's so funny you say that because i was thinking for years about taking a theology class and then my podcast that's on not not this one now this one here we go podcast is not on hiatus but I have another one, Tales from a Butterfly. That's what it was about. It was um, a, a self-development podcast, personal development podcast with like a little spiritual twist. So, and then I would speak different places and people would say, um, so when are you going to go into ministry? And I would say, <laughs> let's back that up. God can use me to drop a word, but I don't think, and maybe they didn't mean pastor because I know me, I'm definitely not called to be a leader over somebody's <laughs> flock whether it's in church whether it's out of church like i'm not that that is not what it is so i was like lord use me in whatever area whether it's calling in a housewife or and i think too looking at you and i i hope i find myself in the same boat the way that we do talk about these people it is not a you're trash. I'm going to bash you. Mm -hmm. Even when we get mm -hmm. to the, the frustrated levels. And even though I do give an occasional read or two, but I do think the energy we come at it with is different. I could yeah. really see you as a minister. I definitely could. I said I was going to do, do that. So that way, when I went somewhere and they say all clergy stand up, I would be like, and see, I'm the exact opposite. <laughs> when I, I go to a new church and they be like, Kenny, we have all the visitors stand. I'm not, no, <laughs> no, no, no look, I don't. Don't bring no attention to me. Like, I'm really that person when I'm out. When you're out. Look, I'm not standing for visitor. I'm standing for clergy. Oh, <laughs> a first lady. Listen, I couldn't be a first lady. Oh, you need prayer from the pastor? First lady will pray with you too. Let's go. My friend's cousin was a pastor. And her cousin who was married to him talked about how they did the old, it was the old school school, old school where you would, um, 
past the the offering plate. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many pairs of panties that they found in on? Yes, oh. yes. It, uh, to me, I would be scared know, to you do know, that. Somebody gonna hear that and, and they gonna think, "Ooh, yeah. <laughs> let me <laughs> let me get into pasteurizing." <laughs> Yeah, uh huh. Well, we we've had a one of those um, kind of sort of on the housewives we know down in the P. Okay. Speaking of, I want to talk about something first. I okay. don't know if you thought. So we're gonna talk a couple of things. I don't want okay. to get your opinions on. One of the things that you know I talked about this past weekend when I think I was in the car somewhere <laughs> was, <laughs> you know, um, you watch Bell Collective, right? Yes. Whew. Okay, so. Yes. Sophia, I'm I'm gonna call her Sophia now because that's what she requested to be called. Yes. But if I call if I slip up and say so Gucci, that's just because that's how we first met her, right? Yeah. So I'm trying to be respectful of the ask. So she comes out and she says, you know, um, that she felt unprotected, right? Mm -hmm. Um, because they brought in Selena, who she had had a physical altercation with. And then there was Marie who said that she <sighs> felt I think she, the word that I cannot recall the exact word, it, it was either silenced about not being able to talk about Latrice's lawsuit being dismissed, but yet the mm -hmm. lawsuit being brought back up. So my response at that moment was, hmm. be, and this is where I came from with that, and some people didn't really get it. So I wanted to kind of reiterate it, but I also wanted to get your take, right? Okay. My response to that was, if you ever feel like, and this is just me on a job that I don't, I'm not the, I don't, I don't own. Okay. okay. Um, and because I've been a contractor before and I know that I could walk in on any day and they will tell you that today is your last day. Um, and they don't have to give you no explanation. Mm -hmm. And I have been escorted out of the building, um, <laughs> simply because it, they had made another decision or something happened. And for that reason, I, I started keeping nothing on my desk whenever I worked except a mirror so I could see who was coming up from behind me. That's it. That's it. Okay. A mirror. That's all. <laughs> so when it was time to pack up, I would close the mirror and come out <laughs> and right? so, so my perspective is coming from a place of if you're not owning, if you don't have ownership of this show, yeah, and you have a and you have the means to live. The mm -hmm. show you're not dependent on this show as it seems that Marie, you know, when I Googled her net worth, it said millions upon millions upon millions. It did. Mm -hmm. And she is opening the clinics. And so I and she lives in the gated community. Mm -hmm. And then we see how Sophia lives with JJ. In my mind, if I feel like if I'm in a space where I have no ownership of this situation, then I'm gonna leave. Yeah. Period. Like, that's just me. Um, if I have, I want to have a conversation first. Yeah. With the people I need to have a conversation with. If nothing changes, then that first day that I saw Selena <laughs> was going to be in the, uh, uh, okay, goodbye. 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 Mm -hmm. goodbye. Yep. Sayonara. Although <laughs> I, as a viewer, feel like it makes the story more interesting. Yes. I also have to take into account those feelings after an altercation that I felt like could have been avoided. Yes, yes. I agree. I see. Here is like with the Soguchi and Selena of it all. I fall, I feel like I can fall on both sides at the same yeah. time, which is hard. Mm -hmm. But from Soguchi's perspective, what I felt in that moment when she said feel protected, because I, I also, and I'm sure you did too, saw people having discussions about meaning physically protected, like Selena was going to attack her. Mm -hmm. I felt like the altercation happened last year. She gets the, was it peace order where at that time they couldn't be around each other. Right, right. I am a full-time cast member on this show and I'm supposed to trust my production team has my best interest at heart. The person who hired me for this job, y'all have my best interest at heart. I get into an altercation. I know I shouldn't have. Thank you for bringing, I mean, but it happens real life. Thank you for bringing me back. And then if what she's alleging is true and I find out, hey, we're bringing this person on 
via production because they tell me, oh yeah, we're filming with Selena today. And you didn't even have, for, for, for me to trust you, I have to trust my producer to open up and for me not to even be afforded a conversation. Hey, listen, you have the option to stay or go, whether she liked it or not. However, this is how we're moving forward. I know you have a peace order in place. We will make sure that you're not filming together until that's resolved, mm. but we are bringing her back. I would feel like, whoa. And, and to me, I, I'm gonna be honest, I would be looking at it like, oh, this is the setup because y'all want the drama for the show. It right. has to be because why else would you not have a conversation with me when you already know how it's affecting my family, my husband's kids, him, Selena herself, me. And then now we have to watch her kind of try to navigate this without, I'm supposed to open up to you, my producer, mm. so you can follow the story. I can't even trust you. How am I supposed to open up to you? Okay. Okay. And, and for me, I think that you're right because also too, I look at it from my own jaded perspective and I admit I am jaded because of my experiences. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. And yeah. so because of my own experiences, any situation I walk into and especially having worked in Hollywood for, for a little while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then also having done a reality show where I know, I know, I'm not, I can't speak about my specific contract, gotcha. but I know in most contracts, they, it says <laughs> we can do whatever we want. Yes. And they okay. don't read, they don't read that. I, I've seen a housewife contract and it literally says they can do whatever they want and portray you however they want to portray exactly. you. Exactly. To fit the story or the yes. narrative that they are trying to build for yes. the story. So, you know, I take my own experiences and, and, and that's what I bring to the table sometimes. Not always necessarily putting myself, I could because it's impossible to always do it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and to hear that perspective, I feel like, yeah, uh, a mitigation for this situation is, hey, we're going to be bringing on Selena. I know that you guys have the peace order. The best case scenario is that you guys figure out a way to work this out so that everybody on wins. <laughs> Wait, on, on the camera. So everybody <laughs> wins, right? And I think that's the best case scenario. Uh, and I, I totally agree with that. That's the best case scenario. Um, and, 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 and hopefully she would have said, okay, well, yeah. And that could have been a, a, a negotiation tool for her too, as yeah. well. Uh, okay, well, you're gonna have to cough up a little more cash for me to do that, or yeah. else I gotta walk. But again, like I readily admit that I am, I can be jaded by my own experiences with that. And I think, like you said, we don't always put ourselves in the other position because we all do speak from where we come from. I, I worked at a job where I know that I wasn't protected. The vice president is, is giving me authority over ma having management come to me to make different decisions. And then when things shift, the same management that you would have meetings, uh, meetings, in other words, sessions with me about how this manager doesn't do this, this manager isn't trustworthy, this manager needs to be fired. Either, then I get an email down the road, by the way, you're now going to be working under this manager. And I'm like, so I have like, no, like I can't even come to you about anything anymore. Or right, you having right. a personal conversation about personal development with your vice president. And then you're hearing the conversation from other people. So for me, I, I felt like I could feel so Gucci in that moment, like, dang, like they couldn't even tell me. And again, we know this is why, come on. If you wanted Selena to be a bell, she'd have been a bell from the beginning, maybe. But this was an incentive, if you will, for her to be a bell. And then now it's like, then we got to see So Gucci and JJ almost at odds over this situation. So Gucci wants to now move on. And JJ yeah. is like, I'm done with it. I mean, JJ is now calling out production, you know, on Instagram. And it's like, it, it, it just didn't have to go this far. And I do fault. Um, the team for that. I feel like they should be more honest with their team. To me, for outside looking at it, it looks like manipulate. Well, again, I can't say that because you made a, a good point. The contract says we can do this. 
But but when you want to be on TV and you see all the perks that come with it, sometimes you think that can't happen to you because they can't use what I don't give them, but they can create scenarios <laughs> and real feelings come out. And I, I look at it, you know, like it, it's an interesting dynamic because we look at a destiny from Love and Marriage Huntsville and her situation. And in speaking with her, I asked her directly, I was like, you know, how did you feel about them coming on? And she said, I was ready to tell my story. So mm. I was, I was like, bring it, you know, I mean, yeah. that, those were her exact words, but that was her frame of mind. So, um, you know, it's an interesting distinction. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. how different people process that. Speaking yeah. of Love and Marriage Huntsville, I earlier did a story about the live that happened with Carlos yeah. King, uh, Tambra Sharif from Bell Collective. She's funny. Dustin, du she is. I well, I, I like her. her because you know I love a, I, I love a, a, a radio TV personality. Yes, we, yes. You know that there's that shared connection, even though yes. she's doing a lot of great things. Um, it's just I understand her perspective mm -hmm. a lot of times. Um, and then Dustin, who I just absolutely yes. adore like if you meet him in real in, in life i mean he's just uh he's Dang. like a, just a sweetheart um and then Letitia, um who i think was in a position where i did not expect her to <laughs> just i didn't expect her to go there and it it didn't even come out almost like angry it came out more like matter of fact and that's it what's did. even more scary i was like whoa not scary but even more like girl i'm listening right like <laughs> i think if i had been watching it live i would and i mean you could see i mean i watched it again and i had to like because i started on bondi blue shout out to bondi blue yes hey bondi love her shout out to bondi i um i i had her on the channel because uh a couple of months ago to have yep. like a, a super serious conversation. Mm -hmm. And I felt like she was probably the best person to have it with because just having mm -hmm. spoken with her, like when I went to New Orleans um, and just spiritually, I felt like when I was talking to her, I I felt like we I had left this universe. I, I wouldn't even lie. I felt like I would, I felt like I did not want to leave to go even see my family. We were just having such a good conversation. So um, I have to I always saw the pictures. I was low key jelly because even through the pictures, you could feel y'all's connection through the pictures, just in your stances. And I was like, okay, I feel like something metaphysical happened. I missed out. Like, yeah, you know, I mean, like, it was, it was, it was on to me. And she probably has conversations like that on a daily, right? But <laughs> you know, for me, it was just like I'm just in awe, and I'm just I felt like I was in the right space, the right yeah, time, the right, the right time. person. And yeah. when people make you feel safe like that, I knew Ooh. she was going to be the safe space for me to have yeah. that conversation that I felt yeah. like needed to be had. So yeah. I wanted to shout her out, but I saw that there first. Mm -hmm. um, she, so I then went back to watch the interview myself, and basically what Letitia alleged for people who missed it was that mm. the conversation that Martell. <laughs> was bringing up about her was from someone she messed around with while she was in college. And that it had been alleged by Martel that he saw either evidence of it or he saw it yeah. happen. And she says there's no way he could have seen it happen because she alleges that back then in college, mm -hmm. the people thought that Martel liked boys. Again, mm -hmm. let me put this banner up. Okay. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly, 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 allegedly. All right. So then she went on to say that what was unaired was Mar Marceau's clapbacks at Martel, which were naming men that Martel had allegedly slept with. That was edited out of the episode. And again, you can see Tambra like. Uh, uh huh. And even, but you know, normally Carlos will speak, speak up and say, let's say allegedly. And the person goes allegedly. She was not moving. She said, ain't no alleged, ain't no alleged. Listen, y'all say I don't say a lot. I know more than people think I know. I said, girl. I was, I was shocked. Now, I think had it been left there, I would have, it would have just been tea that <laughs> spilled about a, a, an, an allegation she spilled. And, and I yeah. think it would have been, that would have blown up by itself, right? Mm -hmm. But, um, 
and I have no thoughts about to be honest with you, I'm a gay man, so I don't it that it, and that's his business to me. That's that's his business. That's his own if it's true, that's his own journey, and I'm not judging yeah. that. But the part that was disturbing to me was when she said that the uh, I I believed the revenge P thing. So did I from, from so get go, I. right? But the fact that she also doubled down on the on the affirmation that it happened and then went on Come to on. give an example that so first of all, I'm wondering, how do you know that it, it did you did did your I husband think she saw it? it? I, did yeah, you I, see it? I think I think he showed not just the guys, but maybe the guys were there and their wives were there. I think Kimmy seen it. I think they have all seen it. So somebody wrote in the chat, and again, we're going to say alleged on some of this because somebody said in the chat that they sh that he showed them that as alle she he allegedly showed them that as evidence that she was cheating, mm -hmm. and that's how it was shown. Regardless, to me, um, I it and then that there there was the, there was the allegation that oh yeah because he's also done that with his baby mama after he after he paid for her to get some type of alleged enhancement i was i was i was so disturbed yes. because i had to think about the broader scope of that i don't know that i would be able to walk onto a show and onto a set where i felt like the people that i that that i'm working with have seen me in that position that's intimate that's yeah, so and, and, intimate. I would, I would, I, I like, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I, no, I, I was going to say, and with Mel specifically, even if you had a video of, well, even the more disturbing part is the fact that it was you and Melody and you wanted your baby mom to put it out as if it was Melody and somebody else. That's number one. But the fact in that, in that particular position they were in, it wasn't even just sex. It was her performing an act of service for you. And you were okay with exposing her like that to your friends, to your, uh, the, the mother of uh, your son. To me, that level of just like, that is a vulnerable position for somebody to be in. And you were okay with showing it. It's like, and to me, which is why I think all these years they have played along with him because in, in I know in my mind, if somebody was showing me their partner, I would be like, oh, well, if they can disrespect them, th there's no way that they, if if they knew something on me that they're not going to blow it up. So let me just kind of play along, tiptoe along. Because on one hand, it's like, okay, well, people know he lies, so they might not necessarily believe it. But if he does have something on me and really comes out with some stuff, if he can disrespect her, that's like if somebody can disrespect their mama, you don't care nothing about me. I mean, you know, we do have instances where mothers sometimes, you know, we know we have those situations. But if you can disrespect the person close to you like that, you wouldn't care about telling my business. So I feel like that's some of the reason why they've kind of tap danced mm. and more so been Martel, Martel, Mar Martel's my guy. That's my guy. That's what Marcel used to say. That's my guy. You knew Martel was like this especially if you've seen you said martel was your guy after you seen the baby mom shaking her tail based on time frame so come on y'all knew this about martel and i think that that revelation to me because insane I, it, it it added a different layer to the to my my perspective on the whole situation and yeah. how i am processing i still haven't processed it to be, I, I'm just gonna be completely honest. Yeah. When I saw it, I, I begin. It, it's like a door opened, and I feel like I'm looking into a room that I thought was a closet, but is actually a football stadium. It's a massive. And then when she said, "He Martel saw their son out, and sent them a text message months later after having no communicate, like none of the after you." Talked about my wife, because I'm going to tell you right now, I already knew. I said, listen, we're not going around here fighting. We're not pushing violence. We're not even saying we necessarily condone violence. But I do see how people snap. Because oh, on I any know. given day, 
it, you like, listen, Lord, be with me. Lord, go before me. Holy Spirit, go before me because you don't know. I said my Corey would have fought. They would like that. They would have had to cut to commercial because the cameras would have been shaking. They'd have been moving. I already know that my husband would have fought him. So then you have the audacity to send a text message to Letitia and Marceau and say, you're doing such a great job with your son and raising him. And then, and then I said, oh, that's not audacity. I know, you know, mental health is not a joke, but that to me speaks volumes. People throw around the word narcissist and narcissism, but that speaks volumes of a person. Like, are you kidding me? You tried to insinuate that my wife, like you're talking about my wife's sexual history. Now you're trying to talk about my sex, like the stuff that he was saying and didn't care that it was spilling on to uh, Tisha. And it was like Dustin Ross in, in that live said something so critical. He said the most honest thing we've got from Mar Martel was when he was in that confessional saying, if you say something that basically hurts him or offends him, I'm paraphrasing that, that I'm going to get you back and say whatever. That's a dangerous person. Like, so when she was saying that stuff and we've already heard some of the things with him and Melody, I was like, Martel is a dangerous person, not even necessarily physically, but mentally he's, he's dangerous for somebody's mental health. There's like you said, there's no way I could walk on. There's no way I could walk on a set and think that we're about to film with like you, you've shown all these people me in a vulnerable situation. Like, there's no way. Mm -mm. I don't even know how, you know, because even in the episode, it sounded like Marceau was done with him. Yes. Um, I don't even know how you proceed with filming anymore. That's what I was wondering. With, and, and, and like, how, how does the show continue in this current state? Because I do mm -hmm. feel like I... You know, I know that they've already filmed the reunion, but I do think that there, and I'm sure that there probably is. Usually, there's a therapist at least on call. Like, some, there's a therapist that's available for for, yeah. for most reality shows. They may not be physically there, but they are in some way, shape, or form a phone call away. Mm -hmm. Usually, okay. Um, from my understanding, and it's from my <laughs> remember, Karen reached out on Candace's behalf because Candace told her go to hell. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It, when, when, it, it is true that that is that is the case. Yeah. And so I, my wonder is, is there someone because I do think that, you know, a, that this because of the level of where this is gone, mm -hmm. I don't even know how to talk about a show that I love um, anymore, because I am talking about things that I don't feel comfortable talking about. Yeah. And then I, I, there's no way for me to talk around it because I know no. I, you can't, as Bethany says, and I love <laughs> to bring her up, but you can't put the toothpaste back in the bottle. Yeah, yeah, you can't. And, and there is no us meeting up three months from now. Man, can we have this count? Kind of, as low as you went, and, and like I said, the, the, the restraint that Marceau showed I know for me, Corey would probably be able to show restraint on behalf of himself. But when it came to someone throwing blows at me, just like, even though as a woman, if somebody was coming at me, it would be up. But if they were coming at, you know what I'm saying? Like we would do that for each other. We would have tore that pavilion park up. And that's just like, there's no way. Or, or I would have had to turn around and leave. If 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 you if they if they were cognizant of we're business people we can't be out here fighting there's no way that I could have stood and went back and forth with him I would have had to leave mm -hmm. because it's going to get physical or it's going to go ugly and you don't want to be on a show where you know like listen I'm trying to evolve into my higher self but this person <laughs> is just saying this stuff to me and you think I'm just gonna let you slide. Like there's no way, because we know that once something is out there, it's out there, whether it's true or not, you're going to have somebody that's yep. going to believe it. Yep. I, I, I don't know how, listen, Marceau hasn't always been one of my favorite people. I've just kind of been like, oh, Marceau gets on my nerves, but not, but in those, in that moment, I commend him for not becoming the Incredible Hulk. Listen, they, they definitely, according to Letitia, they definitely 
edited him down though oh that's um, right you know what that's right I, he may so have that's right he may not have turned into the incredible hulk but he let me tell you something i when i when i when i think about a man's a man reading another man <laughs> no listen i nobody has it, it, that i can think about in this in this current season <laughs> nobody has read a man down harder than jj read glenn down in this past Ooh, episode of, baby you know, okay that was a read and then they turned around and had drinks and effortlessly he slid into that that's the thing it's not even like they started out there the way jj was able to kind of just i uh, that was impressive to me the it, way it was, and there was nothing that Glenn could say, but and look, we're still able to move on. Yeah, you please don't try to come back and say right, that. I, I need you to move on. <laughs> yes. I, JJ did a classy read, and I'm not gonna lie. I liked uh Willie's read of Cliff the week before when he oh said don't, you gotta pick up the yeah. kids for <laughs> I mean, he was boom, 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 boom. I was like, listen, Cliff and Glenn, y'all just stop. Please, okay. y'all are no man, even though JJ sound country, but JJ ain't, he got JJ, something going on upstairs. JJ went from joking to dabs real quick. Listen, JJ was like, I said, come on. And like, I felt my, I was like, come on, JJ. Because do you feel, I feel like Cliff has a business. They make money, obviously. We know that Glenn um, made money on what he does, but I feel like, there is a level of insecurity and that's why they feel the way they feel around Aikisha and Willie. I, I, I feel like, or, or there's something, or maybe that they, something Dr. Wendy said when she said people or have a fear, her mother told her people fear turning older because they haven't accomplished everything, right? So then yeah. you see an Aikisha and Willie coming in and he's this big NFL player and they have brick and mortar businesses and, Aikisha is getting things done on the Ferris Street and the different things, things are moving. I feel like there's a level of uh, maybe not insecure, or maybe it is a little bit of insecurity, you know, because Glenn and Leticia sat in their confessional and said, they, they're like a little hoity-toity, Aikisha and Willie. So I feel like they all, Cliff, uh, uh, Leticia and um, Glenn kind of feel like a little bit of insecurity around them mark you know my my thought every time they say it is and is, is it is it that or and also too i think that and i said this in a review that when akisha had the issue with them showing her doing the twerk in the intro yes um though if it were me and i had the power to change it i would change it right yeah. just because she was it bothered her Right. Very clearly, it's yes. Small, it's a small ask, or maybe not, because once the edit, once the episodes are packaged, they might they might have already been shipped, and that would be a mm. difficult thing to do. So I, because of the way they film their seasons, mm -hmm. I don't know how that works, but um, I I thought it I thought it humanized her. I thought it, okay. it I thought it I thought to me that it it showed uh, an open side of her that I feel like we've been seeing of her this season. Mm -hmm. But I was going to say that when you meet Akisha in person, I think that she and Willie do hold themselves to a high standard. And that is mm -hmm. how they move yeah. through life. And so to some people, that is that could be intimidating. Yes, that yes, because they're not necessarily looking down on you. This is, just, this is about me and what I hold myself yeah. to. It has nothing to do with you. That's how I feel about them. I mean, and I didn't get to meet Willie, but I did meet Akisha. And from my, meeting her, that is definitely the impression that I get. Like, okay. I, this is the standard I hold myself to. And I, I, I'm not gonna accept anything that I feel like is below that. And that doesn't necessarily always extend to you, but sometimes it may. Yes, I feel like she is the type of person that could call you to your higher self. She reminds me of Ebony K. Williams. When when you're around them, you want to sit up straighter. You want to mm. sit up a little straighter. You want to enunciate mm. a little more. It's nothing that they're doing, but it calls you to a higher self. Like, oh, let me. I, I had I told Ebony before there were times when I had to turn her and Dustin the podcast off because I felt like it was checking me when they talk about entrepreneurship and doing this and staying on top of things and i had to turn it off because it was too much of a mirror 
So I I think that maybe they are mirrors also to what what they may want to they don't want want to be Aikisha and Willie, but uh, Glenn and and Letitia aspire, you know, they are trying to do some things. And I feel like, like you said, they hold themselves to a standard and it could make people feel intimidated being around them. Yes. Yeah, I, I agree. And when you talk to you talk about Ebony and you talk about Dustin as well, I think they work so well together. They're, it's, they seem like very different people, but I, they almost like, like are a yin and yang. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that when you have a conversation with Ebony, you are you are exactly right. I mean, I do feel like, OK, let me you know, you do want to. OK, like I'm talking to because she carries yes. herself like royalty. Yes. Yes. You talk yes. to Dustin. You yes. do, you, you're gonna stand up. I mean, meet, even meeting him in person, you're gonna stand up a little straighter because <laughs> you know, he's, I mean, he, he comes, he was a very self-assured guy, but he's also mm-hmm. very friendly. You know what I'm saying? So yes, I, I feel that that's probably what's happening. Um, I want to move on to get some opinions about this season of Potomac for you. Mm. How are you feeling about it overall? What's standing out to you? What's irking your nerves? And do you feel like it's a better season than last? I am happy that I am not sitting with bated breath and clenched butt cheeks every week because somebody is going to say something that is going to trigger a conversation that can be triggering for some people. Is somebody going Mm -hmm. to say something? Is somebody Mm -hmm. going to do something? And we know what we're seeing, but people try to gaslight us and tell us we're not seeing it, including the cast. So it is, it's refreshing to not be in that space. I went in with no expectation. Um, I'm trying to allow myself to enjoy the moments that I can enjoy. You know, we all watch these shows and certain ones we, I hate to say like or dislike because we don't know them, although some of us do know or know, you know, or kind of familiar mm-hmm. with some of them, but um, who you resonate, who resonates with you and who doesn't. And I'm finding myself just enjoying some of the light banter. Um, for me, every episode doesn't need to be drama on a 10 because that makes me anxious, like watching it. <laughs> um, the when <laughs> it does. And that's why I don't like reunions. Reunions yeah. are not my thing because Mm. I don't feel like things really get fully addressed. And we know that they do 10 hour days and they have to condense it. So for me, it always leaves me feeling like someone someone always walks away from the reunion feeling stupid because of their prop, because their prop was kind of like cut down because we couldn't explore it. So for Mm. me, that's, so I don't like reunions. Um, Giselle and Wendy, glad they moved on. There's a part of my brain that's like, who after three years of not speaking to somebody now it was just so easy. No, we know they, so then the other part of my brain says the reality, let's follow the reality is that they both want to keep their jobs. The show is about conflict and resolution. They have to move on. So I'm going to accept it. I'm not going to dissect it. I'm going to move on with them. So that's the other part of my brain. I'm going to tell you right now, and I'm going to contradict myself. I just said, you can't say you like and dislike a person. I, from her first season, Mia has not been somebody that I've wanted to see on my screen. But I didn't, I don't like calling for somebody. I don't want nobody to lose their check either. So can she like make can she make it elsewhere other than Potomac? Um, but I was, I was, I was working with her, even when, you know, she would have beef with Wendy and with um Candace. Didn't want to see her on my screen, but I'm just gonna. Whew, just bite down on my lip and fast forward her scenes. This thing that she's doing with her kids, I understand. If I believe that she believed it was reality, I would be okay with it. If you want to put your business out there like that, because you because this is your real reality, I believe it. I'd be fine with it. But this ain't your real reality. You do not believe that child is angst. I know Gordon brought it up first at the reunion last year, but you shut it down. And then you do things like post ink and Gordon and say, I'm so happy the father of my kids are getting along, not showing that you're really talking about Jeremiah's father because he's not included in your post. So you want to get the audience talking before the season. You purposely didn't include him in that post. You were misleading. So if you're mis- you're misleading already before going into the season, I already know what we're in for. That conversation, Mia had the unmitigated gall to be in that kitchen 
baking cookies with her kids saying, do you believe, uh, do you want to take these cookies to school? Yes. Do you want to, her wording, do you want to take these cookies to school? Okay. But you told us a few weeks ago when people were saying that you're putting your kids in a bad position because the people at school will see it. But my kids are homeschooled. So where are they taking the cookies, Mia? To the living room? So you have the unmitigated gall to sit in our face. You created this. Instead of just saying, let's bake cookies. That's my issue with me. You want to go further. You want to take them to school. To Gordon's apartment? Is that upstairs? Like, where, where are we going? Oh, you know what's funny? I didn't even pick up on that. Shout out I, to me and my I girlfriend. Didn't... We were, she brought it up. And I was like, girl. Yes. Because I said... She's she she's a teacher. I said, are y'all allowed to have outside foods brought in? Because I know because of allergies, you can't take outside food in. So I'm like, and is she lying about taking the cookies even to the teachers? And then we talked about that. Then on top of that, you start out by telling your kids about how asking them how they feel about divorce, only to circle back and say, do y'all know what marriage is? Get off my screen. You didn't even have a conversation. Do you know what marriage is? And then let's talk about divorce. You ask them, do you know what divorce is? And then you want us to believe that the kids think you and Mr. Inc. are best friends. Only for your daughter to tell Gordon twice, what happens if mommy marries Mr. Inc.? And then for that daughter to say, you can't marry Mr. Inc. You get what you get and you can't complain. That to me, I, I was, I was out done only again, if I thought this was a real reality, if she wants to show it, then, Hey, I don't believe, I believe this whole scene was set up and you are using those babies to secure your story. And that to me is utterly disgusting. Like how, and how dare you play in my face? I'm done. You know, earlier I said I had not seen or witnessed a read. Um, and, and I referenced JJ of giving the read of last week, but I'm going to have to give <laughs> you the read of this week. And the week is not yet over, but I'm going <laughs> to go ahead and preemptively give it to you because you actually broke down a lot of things that me watching the scene took in and processed differently. Whereas I'm still trying to understand, <laughs> like I still need a diagram for this whole thing for me. And here's the thing, this is my thing. So in, for me, in being in the spirit of transparency, I met Mia prior to her joining the show. Mm -hmm. um, she is, in, I would say, like, I'm really good friends with one of her good friends as well. Okay. And you so- You good friends with Jacqueline? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> well, I did meet Jacqueline that same day. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Um, So when I met them, I was just like, oh, they're really, you know, sweet girls. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, so um, there's a, there's a disassociation that I have to do. You have to, yes. Because- yep. You know that it's it's it that that was happenstance, right? Yeah. So in in knowing that, I refrain from ever reaching out to to ask her specifics about the show. I I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't even talk to her about it because I've never asked her to do an interview. Simply because when I give my critique, I want to be able to just give my critique, and Lord hope for the best that she don't slap <laughs> me when she see me. You know, like because we haven't run into each other again, even though. Okay we have, our friends have had events. It's just that I would be leaving and then she would be coming in. Got you, okay, okay. So, there, so there's that. And I've never met Ink either. I actually never met Gordon. So, okay. all right, so just to put that disclaimer out there. My problem though with Mia is that her stories have inconsistencies that are un like, I can't understand. And for me, I'm in agreement with Giselle when she says, if I can't understand it, I don't, I, let's, let me, let me talk about the Gordon of it all, because the Gordon of it all is where I, I'm, I'm having a better understanding of dealing with 
family matters as a result, as a re as it relates to um, certain elements of his condition. That's what mm -hmm. I'll say. Okay. Um, and so I think Kiana is the described this situation so accurately, and 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 a and a better story would be taking Gordon and Mia and 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 maybe even the kids and having something set up by Kiana's uh fiance so that they could have a healthy dialogue about whatever is happening mm -hmm. how it's a, how it's going to move forward and get some real suggestions and some real counseling on the screen since it's been brought to screen about how to how to move forward so that the audience i.e. me can understand <laughs> what's happening because I really don't, you know, yeah. Ink is in and out of the picture. That's your boyfriend. Is is Gordon okay with this? Maybe some days he is. Maybe some days he's not. Maybe yeah. some days he's in a mood. Maybe some days he's not. As a community of friends, that's got to be confusing. I think, and I thought that Kiana was probably the only person that could that was really equipped to to, to narrate that, mm -hmm. um, in a way that Mia has has not been able to do. Yes, it, and. I believe she can't narrate it because she's feeding it. So for instance, um, Gordon, I'm so glad you're here. I was talking to the kids, you know, about the divorce and he makes a comment and says, yes. And she goes, oh, so you do want the divorce. You're playing mind games. So mm. it's like, oh, oh, you do want the, you know, this man doesn't want the divorce. Yeah, I don't, I don't get the feeling that he wants it either. Yeah. So it's no. just like little games. I, like when Jacqueline said, maybe you need to stop saying, I love you. Well, I'm, I do love him, Jacqueline. Mia, you are not that slow. You understand what you're doing. And I, I do wonder, I'm not, um, certified to diagnose and I would never want to diagnose. They've put it out there that he is bipolar. There are times that when I have to wonder, is it a manic state or am I, or is he just pissed off about something? Because she tends to relate it all to every single thing he does that she doesn't like when her behavior is questioned in triggering him. Oh no, I'm not triggering him. He has an episode. Mm. And then mm. it becomes a question of which came first, the chicken or the egg. Is it, a, yes. is, it is it him just being naturally triggered? Or, or trying to accept this reality, but then something happens and it's like, I can't do this today. Yes. Yeah. Which may be just natural. Yeah, which may be in love with her. And he she may not be in love with him, but he's definitely still in love with her. Yeah. And he literally said that first episode, I said, I wasn't going to do this on camera. And mm. so what, so what's he's saying, I said, I wasn't going to do this on camera. She's telling the audience and her friends, sometimes he's okay with it, sometimes he isn't. Yeah, he just said, he never said, I'm not okay with it always. He's, he specifically mentioned the camera. Again, we don't know behind closed doors, maybe he is having uh, episodes, whatever. but I do believe that Mia kind of contributes in a way to kind of like exacerbate for the show. I look at her show history. She's on the show, they were talking about you know, you know, the rumblings of, you know, her being one season, then all of a sudden she puts up a very misleading post to make people think she said she had cancer, but she did not. She mentioned she was called by the cancer department at whatever, 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 and never said what was going on. Boom, you're back on the season. And Giselle says, is this what cancer, no cancer looks like? Now I have an issue because I never said I had. So it's like, okay, then it's me and Gordon are separated. Now we're bringing ink into the picture. And when you listen to her on Carlos King's podcast, it was almost so like, I don't want to watch Housewives and have to try to have a diagram in my head. Is she lying? Is she not lying? Because then <laughs> none of your story, I can't follow any of your story and you're not enjoyable. Even with Giselle, sometimes we like, girl, we know she lying. She adding sauce. But like with Mia, this, the, the situation topics can be so heavy. And then you want to make them complex on top of that. It's like, she said she was stripping. Well, what? she was with Ink in high school. They moved to North Carolina when she was 19. She's in the, she's a dancer in a ball gown at a steakhouse. 
she meets Gordon. She says Gordon was tricking off her words on not just her, but other girls. And she never, ever, ever slept with him. He even co-signed the car for her. And mm -hmm. Ink found out. She said, I never slept with him. Then he disappeared for two years. In between that time, her and Ink broke up. She got married, had her oldest son. Then Gordon showed back up years later. They get married and they move on. And it's like, well, what? then how were you with him for 15 years? How? And that's what frustrates me about her too. I don't believe what she's trying to present to us is really her reality. Well, interestingly enough, when Giselle was on Watch What Happens Live, Cha her glam squad heard that Mia was moving to love and hip hop. Honestly, I was shocked that they left that in the show because typically mm -hmm. they do not mention they don't mention VH1 shows on, you never, if you think about it, do you see anybody from VH1 ever on Watch What Happens Live? Never. No, you never <laughs> even hear, you. If, if it were left to Watch What Happens Live, Lord, you put, there's probably no other network that does reality TV shows. But, okay. bra <laughs> but Bravo and Peacock, okay, that's it. So the fact that it was left in there and Andy was like, no, she's, she's, she's on Bravo. I was like, that was interesting that Giselle brought that up. And it was and interesting that her glam team had heard that. Giselle is building her case. Um, Giselle says in the show, but before the scene comes up last week about Mia, but what Mia says about Gis Giselle's daughters, before it airs, we have Giselle out doing interviews saying Mia lies, Mia this, Mia that. You can't trust her. Now, the all the things that Mia did when Mia was beefing with Candace and Wendy and you were okay with it. Now those two, you, you've, you've made it good with Wendy. Candace is no longer there. So now we knew it was going to happen. We told you Mia. So now <laughs> the target is on you. Okay. No problem. But, but she's not playing it that way before we see this air and she brings up Giselle's kids. We see Giselle doing interviews about Mia planting little seeds, planting little seeds, planting little seeds. Ashley is doing the interviews, planting seeds about Mia. She does something. She does something as a mother. Wendy, planting seeds. And then we see the scene happen. We don't know if they're necessarily talking about the scene because I was thinking maybe something to do with her children. But we see her talk about Giselle's kids. And then we see this latest scene with her in the kitchen. And then Giselle goes on Watch What Happens Live and says, Mia is dead to me. And I said, Mia mm -hmm. might have just lost. You about to lose your job. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> because seeds have been planted. And then her, I said, okay. Mia might have wrote her. I, and I'm not, well, I'm not saying it's a, you know, cl clearly we don't know, but I just, it's like, oh, Giselle manu is maneuvering different. She's not icing her out. Giselle said in her confessional, I'm taking it in. And then I'm gonna mm -hmm. react. And she has been reacting in real time on multiple interview platforms and has let us know. And her coworkers have been doing the same thing. They're all well, on one accord. If you really go back to, if you look at the history of the show, the only person that Giselle has actually really argued with in real time that we've seen is Karen. Mm -hmm. If you really think mm. about it, like there's never, I mean, when she's re, she's usually react, if she, when she reacted to Wendy after she did all those, she said all that stuff about Happy Eddie and all that stuff like mm -hmm. that. It wasn't, she, she wasn't arguing. Right. Sipping that soda or whatever she was sipping. Right. Oh, that's a good point. Um, even when Candace has gone at her at the reunion, she's never really, Giselle is never going to get out of character. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're never going to see her really argue with someone. And so even when Mia said that about the kid, like the, the boy sneaking in, mm -hmm. while it wasn't like, you know, like your kids are trash. Yes. It, 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 it was more about you brought them into the situation that I didn't bring them into. The intent right? and the intent behind you and doing the intent it. Behind it. So it was interesting to me because Giselle didn't, she does what she always does. She didn't react. Mm -hmm. um, and she reminds me of Phaedra in that way. 
Mm. Oh, 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 yes. There is going to be some other way that I'm going to get you. You're not going to get your but permit to prove the It will not be face to face combat. I'm going to call down to the courthouse and none of your permits is going to get approved for your building. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> speaking of, speaking of, I, 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 have, I have held you hostage longer than I thought I would. But okay. Uh, I, I just want to know, I, I need your thoughts on Married to Medicine. How, how are we feeling? Who are we feeling? Who are we not feeling? And, and who is the real villain on Married to Medicine? I'm going to throw myself on the mercy of the court and the sky squad, which I'm a part of. I have been in and out of married to medicine because I know that these are shows and we don't know these people. However, there is a personal married to medicine that irks me so very deeply that it does make me hard to watch the show. And our mutual friend Kempire has told me, you must watch and you must recap. So I'm gearing myself up <laughs> because this person irks me. And again, which is why I don't like reunions because I don't like having those feelings. I don't care for this person. And I'm going to give you a hint. I'm saying it and I'm not going to take it back. <gasps> she makes for me personally, and I get why people enjoy her. I do. But just like she told Mariah, she can kiss my behind and climb a tree because I'm not really interested in her. <laughs> it's late. Ah, ah. Not so bad you won't even want to watch. Yes. So I've been in and out of the show. I do know what I know the gist of what's going on and everything. Um, but I must do my due diligence and sit down and watch um the latest three episodes like fully and not be tempted to fast forward because I mean she's in like she is the you know whatever so yeah but she her, her on screen and off screen antics just are like when you have on a bikini and it gets wet and then you fell in the sand and then you go to the thing and try to rinse it off but as you walk you realize there's a couple different pebbles that you just can't rinse out that's her I am so glad that I don't have to wear bikinis. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. This is what we'll do. Next time we get together, whether it's okay. on your podcast or mine, okay. hopefully we'll, we'll talk about the season. If you yes. if you choose to watch, I do agree with Kim Pye, my good brother. <laughs> my good brethren, I do think that you should. Um, Taria, thank you for taking your time out of your day of grinding just like the rest of us <laughs> grinding 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 day in and day out uh, yes. but i want to just say thank you i appreciate you as always um we are gonna do our brunch very soon a Leticia yes we are y'all and we're gonna um <laughs> will she come you think she'll fly in no i'm just kidding you know what that would be a fun idea that would be really fun. Come on. Oh, in. Three way brunch with Letitia Pearson. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to have to put that bug in her ear. Um, but we'll, me and you going to have our brunch first. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, can you tell the people where they can find you? Obviously, I have yeah. it up here, but I wanted them to hear it in your voice. Thank you. First of all, thank you so much. Sky Squad, I love y'all. You know, I'm a part of the Sky Squad as well. You can find me Instagram at We Go Podcast. Um, that stands for what else is going on, by the way. I got that from the great Cynthia Bailey. Whenever she would want to evade a question, she would say, now what else is going on? Mm -hmm. Now was a little bit too long for me, so I just cut it to what else is going on, a.k.a. We Go Podcast. Same Instagram, um, YouTube, We Go Podcast. I am on Threads, We Go Podcast. It's fun over there. I have cultivated my feed. Ooh, I, I love need, it. I need to get on a Yes, I am. Listen, I see I'm, uh, my timeline is filled with beautiful black women and I love it. I have cultivated it as such. I'm also on the blue sky at we go podcast dot whatever else comes after blue sky. You'll find me over there as well. Um, I have to take the step to deactivate the Twitter. I have not been on it for research purposes. If I click a link and it leads me there, I still have access to it, but I have not. I've restrained myself. I have not 
been on it, but I do need to deactivate because I know numbers count when it comes to these platforms and you know, we know all about that platform. So yes, that's where you guys can find me. Come over. We have a good old time. We talk about it all. Yeah. And actually your YouTube page will be tagged in the title of this video. So you guys can simply just click on the title or within the description. I will have her information there as well. Sky Squad, y'all know what? I love having our people on and this <laughs> is no exception. So thank you, Taria for your thank time you. and thank y'all for watching and we will catch you of course in the next video all right let me end without this long outro now that you've watched today's video let's get into this group trip to cape town south africa yes y'all sky squad we are hitting south africa and we are hitting it hard april 10th through the 17th of 2025 you can click the link in the description of this video to get more information and to reserve your spot now we're going to keep this intimate because we have a lot to do we are going to be looking at real estate we're going to be learning about retirement and permanent visas dual citizenship buying and purchasing land we are going to be looking at it all because we want options in south africa baby and listen, Cape Town is one of my favorite cities. So of course, we're gonna be doing some of my favorite things. We are gonna be hitting the wineries. We are going on a safari. We're going to Table Mountain. We're going to some of my favorite restaurants. And let me tell you, one of them is Gold Star, baby. If you know, you know. We're gonna be meeting with some expats who have relocated from the United States to Cape Town as well. This is going to be a luxury experience, okay? So we're talking doing the absolute most. So if you've ever wanted to go to Cape Town, South Africa, but maybe you didn't have the group to go with, maybe you just didn't have the right people that wanted to go and experience it with you, this is an opportunity for you to come with us. Now, I only have about 10 to 12 spots available. Yes, because again, I'm trying to keep this thing intimate and I know that what type of experience I want it to be. So get in while you can, y'all. Trust me, in 2025, we are going to be needing all the options that we can get. And I am going to do my utmost to bring us the most that we can possibly get in and out of the country. So come with me to South Africa. The group trip is going to be lit April 10th through the 17th. Go ahead and click the link in this description of this video so that you can reserve your spot today. Cape Town, South Africa awaits.